ice and I've seen snow. I've seen foggy days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely days when I could not find my pen. But I always thought that it would be here in the end. Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at the Hero 565. I've never had a Hero before. Well, I've had a few Heroes. Some Guitar Heroes and so forth, but never a Pen Hero. And we're going to unbox or unpackage this pen right now. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. And the plans they made putting in okay, so here we are with the package, and this just arrived in the mail today. Uh, I did say that I've never had a hero before, a pen hero before, but I lied. This came the other day, and uh, it's going to be reviewed in the next few days, maybe next week. That is a hero 9315, and that's something to look forward to. This is a Hero 565, and I'm very interested in this pen. So let's unbox it right now. This is one of those soft boxes. Ooh, very well packaged. It's beautiful so far. Do we like the crinkly? Let's do a crinkly. Just take daily breaths. And I'll open this package for you. I know some people hate it when I do that. <laughs> I think it's funny. Wow, that took a lot of unboxing. And here's the pen sleeve. Let's see whether this is difficult to get into. And there we have it. The Hero 565. It's that nice Merlot, deep plum kind of color. Uh, I recently did a video on a vintage Parker 51, which I spent a long time on restoring, had a gold cap and everything, but I got kind of enamored of these hooded nibs. And this is, as I, uh, I get this right here, this is like the Parker 61, or is it the Parker 65? I'll get it correct and I'll put it on the screen here. But it has that little arrow that points to the nib, because one of the issues with the Parker 51 was that you couldn't tell where your nib was. And it posts very deeply. And ooh, that's a, that's a nice feel. And it's a bit chunkier down through here than the 51 was. I have unfortunately given that 51 back to the owner he was very, very pleased with it. Let's open it up and see what kind of filler it is. This is an Aerometric. And yeah, it's like the original, it's fixed in there. So that's, that's your filling system. And that's clear, that's interesting. I can't even remember what, uh, what nib this was, but it looks very small, so it looks like a fine to me. Anyway, what we shall do is I will clean this pen out with a little soap and water and rinse it and so forth and get it ready for some ink. And then we'll come back and do some size comparisons, uh, some uh, measurements, and I'll go over the parts and features of the pen, and then I'll come back with a writing sample. As I said, I've never had a hero before. Oh, Guitar Heroes, yeah, uh, indeed. 
Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I would like to be. You can fly higher than an eagle. Cause, Cause you I are am the wind beneath my wings. So can you identify all of those artists? Show me in the comments below. Show me that some of you remember these artists. But as to the fountain pen hero, uh, I've only known them for a while. And I've never had one until now. And because I'm a retired professor, anything new has to be researched and discussed in a history section. And if you were the type that skipped lectures and only wanted to know what would be on the test, you can cheat and use the timestamps below to skip the lecture and ditch the class, just like the kind of student you were in high school, right? Oh, no! To those of you that are still with me and our pen geeks, the class browners, as we used to call ourselves, those that stayed for the extra credit, and because we were genuinely curious. I used to sit on the carpet in front of our set of world book encyclopedias and get lost for hours and hours through the power of the see also list at the end of each article. But I digress. Let's talk about the Shanghai Hero Pen Company and the Hero 565 and other classic pens. I detailed some of this history in a previous video I posted on the vintage Parker 45 I was restoring for a friend. Much of the fascinating story about the collaboration of Parker and Hero was from an article by Frank Underwater, which I'll link in the description below as well. The Shanghai Hero Pen Company has been called the Chinese Parker. The company began in 1931, as emblazoned on their logo. There you can see it, since 1931. The hooded nib developed by Parker with the Parker 51 back in 1941 has become a staple of the Chinese writing instrument culture. Not so much for the sale to the West, but more for sale to the pen market inside China. The collaboration between Parker and Hero in the late 70s on the Parker 45 and Parker's subsequent decision to pull out of that enterprise and gift the technology, tooling, and machinery to Hero left the company the ability to produce Parker-style pens for sale to both East and West cultures and, as I argued in my video on the Parker 45, ultimately results in the Moonman 80, which is a parts interchangeable copy of the Parker 45. There are many, many models of Hero pens, another rabbit hole for pen collectors to explore. This particular model, though it has a hooded nib a la the Parker 51 and the nib pointing arrow on the section a la the Parker 61, it seems more like the Parker 21, which was a budget student version of the Parker 51. Others have remarked that the Hero 565 is reminiscent of the Schaefer PFM from a size and girth point of view. Certainly not from the nib, the Schaefer having one of the most beautiful nibs of all fountain pens, in my opinion. The Hero 565 doesn't even have the Parker Arrow Clip, but rather a very usable, short, and Hero-branded clip. I've learned that Hero got this particular design when Hero acquired Gold Star Pens, which was another Chinese pen maker, in the late 1990s, and rebranded the Gold Star 565 as the Hero 565. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the parts and features of this pen, give some measurements and dimensions, some size comparisons, and do a writing sample. And watch through to the end of the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about this fountain pen. From my initial impressions, this is a pen that is manufactured by the tens of thousands. You can actually get a pack of 15 of these in three different colors, black, red, and green, on eBay right now for $34 and free shipping. I bought this pen on eBay from Bobby Pens for $7.48 US, including shipping. It can be had cheaper, but I was getting a bit tired of waiting six to seven weeks and have the wrong thing show up and decided to get it from Bobby who is always reliable. The pen is very light and the edges are actually very sharp. The body is a light, soft plastic and already bears some scuffing. The cap is a thin metal, as I mentioned, with, with some pretty sharp edges. 
It is a cigar-shaped pen, the same length, but a full two millimeters thicker than the Parker 51. And both the 565 and the Parker 51 are the same weight. The rounded edge flat top tapers up quickly to a barrel-shaped cap that is straight until the end of the cap where it's engraved with, it says 565, and a couple of Chinese characters. That threw me there for a second. And there are some chasing lines on this cap as well that you can see there, which actually breaks up the uh, reflective chrome and all the fingerprints and actually feels fairly rough to the, to the touch. So it uh, gives you some, some grip on that slippery surface. The barrel meets the cap almost flush. And as I mentioned before, you can really feel that sharp edge right there. The barrel is straight for most of the barrel's length, and then it tapers down to a rounded end with a ventilation hole. The cap slips off easily to reveal that classic hooded nib section that tapers down to that, I believe it's a fine, it's not marked anywhere, and it wasn't marked in the auction either. Fine nib, and there's the plastic feed. Plus there is an inlaid chrome piece of metal that indicates the direction of the, of the nib and the proper orientation of the pen. The barrel is separated from the section by a small and again sharp gold colored ring. That edge is very sharp and comes off to reveal the fixed aerometric design filling system. It's very interesting that that part of the bottom of the section in plastic is transparent. I'm not sure what we're supposed to see through there. When I ink it up, I'll see whether we can actually see some ink. And there are some engravings on here of some lines and some Chinese characters, which I would guess say hero. And there is a PVC sack with the bar filler, and that's how you fill that. The cap posts deeply and securely, as you would expect. It makes the pen very comfortable in the hand, and that cap, being so light, doesn't alter the balance of the pen at all. I have to say I enjoy the added girth of the extra two millimeters over the Parker 51. Although the Parker 51 had a much more luxurious feel to it, of course, with that gold-filled cap and the actual resin. I have no desire to disassemble this section and retrieve that nib and, uh, and the feeder, the filler assembly, the collector, ink collector inside there. But I've heard that it's, uh, it's possible that you soak this whole section in some hot water for a while and then you can disengage it, the hood from the section and retrieve those elements out to swap the nib if you so desire. I think I'm going to ink this up on camera just to see how it goes. I've been wanting to try out this new bottle of Diamine Ancient Copper that I recently acquired. So here's a good opportunity. Okay. I'm just squeezing it over and over again. And we now see the purpose of that transparent end of the section. So after about 10 pumps, I sort of overdid it just to see how that little ink window worked. And it worked very nicely. I could watch the ink flow up through there and you'll be able to put that away. Be 
be able to, while you're writing, just screw that off, turn the pen up this way, and be able to see if that starts to get clear, whether you're running in low in ink. Well, that's a nice little feature. Wasn't expecting that. And there we go. Now let's look at some measurements and size comparisons, and I'll be right back with a writing sample. Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you again. Okay, we are back with the writing sample. This is... Posted the hero five six five, and it is I can tell now a fine steel nib. And the ink today, if I can spell ink today. Is diamine ancient copper? Let's check the wetness on this pen. It's not hugely wet, but I've got to say at this point that when I finished inking this pen up. I tried it out on some paper and it did not write. Um, I tried everything. I even squeezed the aerometric uh, filler to try to get some ink and some ink welled up into this part of the, the uh, nib and feed and looked like it was going to drip out but it still did not write. So I had to put my little gapping tool on it and I just slipped it between the tines very carefully and gave it a little bit of a side-to-side -side motion, checked the alignment again, and now it writes. Uh, I think if I do that a couple more times, it might get a little bit wetter, but uh, it seems to be writing okay now. But again, that's not something that you would ordinarily do. If you just got this pen in the mail and you wanted to write with it and you didn't write, people would generally just throw it in the garbage. But anyway, I thought I'd let you know that that's what happened. And I don't expect any line variation here at all. Uh, this is no pressure at all. It's a very thin line. There's a little bit of pressure. Yeah. No, you're not going to get anything out of that. But it is very smooth in all directions. For a fine nib, you're getting some feedback. It's certainly nowhere near the writing experience of that Parker 51. Nowhere near it. Let's listen to it write. Well, it's, uh, as I said, it's a little bit of feedback, not scratchy at all, fairly smooth, but uh, it's giving a fairly dry line, and uh, it's just feeling very stiff on the page. And let's look at some reverse writing. Yeah, it does it, and it gives you an even thinner line. I'm finding one thing that this very thin line does is the thinner the line gets, the smaller my writing gets. And I think that's pretty natural. The uh, larger the nib, the thicker the line, the more you tend to write larger uh, till you get up to calligraphy nibs. And for some fast writing,
It feels very much like a ballpoint, almost. Which I can understand. It's a fairly utilitarian type of fountain pen. But it feels very good in the hand. In fact, trying to write with it unposted feels almost weird. You know, it's like one of those pens that needs to be posted. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, the first thing I like is the price. You know, seriously, this is an inexpensive pen that feels and writes really well. Uh, you can buy them by the gross. Give them out as party favors. It is a great way to get people interested in fountain pens, I guess. That might backfire, though, because one of the things I don't like so much about this pen is that fixed aerometric filling system. Now, I think it is cool for nostalgia reasons myself, but for those who have never used a fountain pen, it might not be a good choice uh, as it forces you to use bottled ink and doesn't fill with very much ink at that. Um, but I'm not finished with my likes yet. I like the way the pen feels in my hand. I like how deeply that cap posts and how securely it posts and how well balanced it is when it's posted. Plus, this pen fits in your shirt pocket very nicely, and you don't mind if it gets knocked about or scratched or when it mixes with your pocket change or with your keys. It's a great pen to take out and not worry about if you've lost it. But on the other hand, the edges of this pen are really poorly finished, and if I'm going to write with this for any length of time, I actually is, I'm going to run a bit of a, a file or some micro mesh around that edge because it is sharp to the point that even when it's posted you feel that against your hand here. So I might just smooth that out uh, to make it more comfortable. And then we'll see how long it takes before this pen gets uninked and put back into storage. Of course on the other hand the amount of fit and finish you'd expect from this pen. Get it in the center of the frame here. Um, considering they're they're built by the th hundreds of thousands I'm sure uh, is not going to be great but look at the edges of this pen BBS 500 I'm just gonna bring this up to the camera here for a second bring my mic up with me see if we can focus on that I'm just gonna open this up a little bit see all the edges especially the edge of the acrylic right there. The edge of that acrylic isn't just cut off and sanded, it's rolled. That edge is actually machine rolled. And all of the edges of the metal are rolled so that they feel soft in your hand. The edge of that cap is rolled. And that takes some engineering. The edge of this cap, I could cut paper with. And the edge in that section and on this barrel, the edge of that barrel is very, very sharp. So that's the difference that I know that the, uh, the Pen BBS 500 is five times the price of this. But when you talk about Chinese fountain pens, let's get these in the center. When you talk about Chinese fountain pens, you're talking about apples and oranges many times. So there's the fit and finish of a Moon Man or a Pen BBS, and then there's a f the fit and finish of a $7 US um, Hero fountain pen. So, just something to think about. Well, that does it for the Hero 565. I'm going to knock about with this pen for a while and see how long it takes before I remove the ink and put it back in storage. Uh, do you have a favorite inexpensive knockabout that you don't care if you lose because you'll just buy another one? Do you have one of those in your possession? Let me know about it in the comments below. I interrupt this broadcast for a public service announcement. I do these pen reviews and related videos because they are fun. I don't profess to be an expert in any way at all please make sure you understand that your mileage may vary. 
I encourage your participation through comments, but I must insist that you refrain from bullying, insulting comments about me, my intellect, my guitar playing skills, my guitar fingernails, or using words like ignorant, stupid, or dumb. If you have such vitriol and bile in your person that you need to be abusive about something so benign as a fountain pen hobby, then please seek professional help. But just know that your ass will be dealt with in the following manner. I don't know that. No. An African or European swallow? Huh? I, I don't know that. <laughs> So much about swallows. Well, you have to know these things when you're a king, you know. And don't forget, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and be sure to ring that bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded. And that just leaves it for me to say. Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.